everybody. Welcome to Perpetual Motion, a podcast focused on lifestyle, self-care, personal empowerment, and positive relationships. I'm your host, Dr. Mo Anderson. I have a first of its kind today, folks, in that I am interviewing a best-selling author. And you're like, oh, you talk to authors all the time, Dr. Mo, but not who are teenagers who have written almost two dozen books. That has not happened before. And as an author myself, I am just fascinated by this young lady and you will be too. I'll tell you a little bit about her. Shanti Hershenson is a literary prodigy. My words, not hers, but <laughs> I, I am saying this as a professional writer. She is amazing. Her first two novellas were published when she was in the sixth grade. What were y'all doing in the sixth grade? We were not writing novellas, were we? Now a teenager, she has written almost two dozen books in several genres, and the reviews are glowing. She has fans all over the globe, five-star reviews on Amazon and Goodreads. Today, we're talking about her prolific writing and the publishing process, using TikTok to promote books. I think she's got 50 or 60,000 followers on TikTok. And she also is taking a stand against bullying, particularly in middle school. And, and whatever else we want to talk about, stay tuned. We're going to have a very, very good time today. And quickly do me a favor. If you're a new listener or returning visitor, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. If you're happy at the end of this episode, and I know you will be, like and give us a rating or follow wherever you are, whatever platform you're on, whatever good thing you can do to help us promote these positive educational episodes. Help us out, folks. You can't say Dr. Mo ain't tell ya you That fear magnifies the consequences of failure What are you scared of? Why are you afraid? I'd rather live like I'm dying than live to die Any day my heart is pure and my soul is safe All right, welcome Shanti Thank you so much for having me I am delighted Let's start with, I've got a ton of things I want to ask you, but we'll start with the most obvious, the one you probably get asked the most, which is, how in the world have you written so many books at such a young age? So I know the number seems like a lot, but broken down, it's really only 1,000, 2,000 words a day for over the span of three years. I vaguely remember, like I started I just started writing consistency consistently when I was in sixth grade, kind of seventh mm -hmm. grade. It was, I was all over the place for a while. And as soon as I realized like, hey, if I just set an amount every single day, I'm going to get this done. And for me, it was a thousand words. For some people, it might be a lot more. And for some, it might be a lot less. But now, um, almost three years later, it's really just become this like easy thing where I know to write every single day. And then I'm finishing my books a lot quicker now. I always am editing a book and I'm always writing a book at the same time. So there's that too. Mm -hmm. And just really that consistency is, I think, what helps me write so many books. Um, other than that, I'm just like a very motivated person overall. And I really just love to write. Understood. Understood. You're a self-starter. And what I hear there is a lot of discipline as well, because uh, even for professional writers to write every day and write the same number of words can be challenging. And I know you've got a lot of other things going on in your life that we're going to talk about because you do have a, you're maintaining your balance very well. Just in regards to your writing process, where do you write? Uh, how do you know when you got to a thousand words? Are you, are you monitoring? Are you just kind of write and see where you are? And you're like, oh, I need 200 more or oh, I need, you know, I went over today. Yay. How, how does that happen? So typically I write all of my books on either Readsy or Google Docs. I really prefer Readsy. It's a lot of fun. And um, what I do is I Sometimes I have to write down the starting word count. Thankfully, Readsy actually tells you how many words you've written. I also um, use NaNoWriMo just to keep track of like all the books. Um, so like both of those. And I um, usually I just try to write. Sometimes it's like I want to get to the end of the scene. And I know that by the end of the scene, I'll have written over a thousand words. So then mm -hmm. on those days, I do overwrite or I just keep writing until I've hit my goal and um, I can actually stop. Some days mm -hmm. I'll write some buffer words just so I like, it's like, how, it's strange how I do it. Um, but I like writing to like the 500 word mark and then another. Um, but sometimes it helps if it's like almost quicker to reach that mark just because I've already written right. some words like the previous day, but it's always a thousand words every day. Yeah, and actually over the summer, it's a thousand words. 
Yeah. Okay. I and I, I that makes sense to me because if I'm in the zone and, and the characters are talking to me, I just, you know, I'm not gonna stop. It's like, oh my God, I got this great thought. It's it's very yeah. creative. And then other days it's a push. It's a push, but you know, it's better to write something than nothing at all and lose your mojo. Uh, what was there anyone in your family who uh, or is there anyone in your family who's who's a writer or interested in literature or do you know what how I you think, got started? <laughs> so everyone in my family likes to read, um, but they're not necessarily writers. Mm-hmm. Um, honestly, like the earliest I can remember actually like wanting to write is in like kindergarten or like first grade. And I sat down, I gathered all the materials and made this little book. So I guess it's mm-hmm. always just been something I'm very interested in. Um, part mm-hmm. of that comes from the fact that I started reading at a really young age and I've just always loved kind of almost escaping from reality with these stories, but also like learning from new perspectives and just getting to read all of these exciting things. I also love watching movies and playing video games. I really just love storytelling and like all of its forms. And you said at, at a really young age, you started reading. What was that really young age? Three, I believe. Wow. <laughs> That's impressive. And were your parents working with you or you just had this ability and I got to tell you started <laughs> don't remember I, I just thought they might have told you I know you wouldn't remember I was just curious if they I like, you know said you, yeah I remember my earliest memory reading because there was like this Disney princess book and I remember like pulling it off the shelf and just starting to like sound out the words and I remember like eventually I could actually read like the first page mm-hmm. I don't I, I, my parents, I'm sure, were there, but yeah, I don't remember how much they helped. I'm sure they helped a little because, you know, three is very young. Yeah, that's still pretty, pretty, pretty amazing. And at a young age, I think uh, it's pretty common, more common around five, four or five for, for the uh, brightest among us. But still, that tells you just got some natural ability there for sure. What, um, what about the uh, publishing process? You've explained a bit how you write, but a lot of people write books, as you know, that never get published. They're in their drawers, they're in their computers, they're wherever, and either they're afraid or they just don't know how. Can you share with us? And also, are you doing traditional or self-publishing? So as of right now, the plan is that I'm going to self-publish probably only for like another year. It depends. Um, Mm -hmm. And then once I'm like maybe 16, 17, however old I decide, and I'm going to have this huge platform and I have done all these interviews. So probably actually maybe around like college age at this point, just so Mm -hmm. I can not worry about like contracts and um, all this stuff when I'm in high school. Then I'm going to take whatever book I really like, whichever one I'm currently working on, and I'm going to actually take inquiry for an agent. And I'm going to say, like, you know, I've done pretty well so far as an indie author, but I'm hoping that, you know, I can get more. There's, like, more opportunities that I really want to experience through traditional publishing and then right. kind of hope for the best and see how it goes. Mm-hmm. That, that's a great plan. That's a great plan because they really do. As you know, traditional publishing houses want to know what you're bringing to the table. Those old days of, you know, we'll do everything for you are, are long behind us now for all artists. It's like, you know, what have you done already that we can build on? So I'm sure they will be more than happy to have you with your acumen in both writing. You'll understand the process and then you'll just growing in followers. I, I'm sure some of our listeners today will connect with you and follow you and we'll tell them how to do that as well. And folks, I want to tell you too, you're probably listening and you're thinking, oh, she, you're 15, Shanti? Yeah. She's 15. You're probably thinking, oh, she's writing coming of age stories, young adult stories. You'd be wrong. She's written Biome Lock, the first in an alien invasion series and the accidental insurgent, a dystopian standalone as well as three books in a series called The Chronicles of, I don't even know what this is, Zild Delay. Zild Delay. I mean, she, this is serious. And you can go on Amazon and read excerpts. And I normally don't hype people's books up like this. I'm like, okay, we need something of value. We can talk about your books later. But I was just blown away when I started reading. I'm reading one of the biome ones. I'm actually going to do an excerpt from here because I want people to hear just how good you are. But those particular genres, I know a lot of young people your age read them, but I don't think there is many writers. What attracted you to uh, those genres? So 
probably for as long as I can remember now, I've really first just loved science fiction. I loved, I used to mm-hmm. want to be an astronaut. Um, I love aliens and like robots and everything like that. I also used to want to be a computer programmer when I was younger. So I feel like that's kind of a science fiction-y type job. Mm-hmm. And as I got older, I started writing more. First off, it kind of started, you know, Biome Lock was that first series and it's like about aliens. I also started writing about like kind of the problems that I see in our Mm -hmm. world but in this more science fiction setting which is where i really kind of fell in love with the dystopian genre of course like the majority of those books were written when i was still in middle school so i had my middle i had my like middle school dystopian phase along with everyone else just mine was writing Mm -hmm. the books instead of reading them um but yeah really it's just probably one of the funnest genres for me to write i do want to try to get into contemporary because currently i do love reading books particularly ones that are more sadder and have like social issues um, mm-hmm. that they like kind of t- discuss. So I'm also looking forward to trying to write um, some contemporary. But even still, I have one contemporary novel that I'm planning, and it's still science. It has science fiction elements. It's like time travel. Um, ooh, I'm spoiling a little. <laughs> Not I understood really. those, and and those are very very popular as well, and they make for good good movies. I'm I'm curious as I was reading, you do a really good job with the uh, setting as well and uh your dialogue everything i was very impressed but are you thinking about that as you're writing or you are you thinking about screenplays movies and series yeah you, you guys should see yeah. she's got the biggest smile on her face i love I, that i knew you'd be thinking ahead i can see that about you and part of it is just like this motivation for me as i'm writing i'm like oh my gosh this would make a great movie um mm-hmm. for fun a lot of the time i like for example one of my favorite books i've written never dying um the other day i got kind of bored and i was like you know i gotta start thinking about never because i haven't written the la- the second never dying book i finished in july mm-hmm. um and i have to write the third one soon and i'm just trying to get back into like the never dying space so um to do that i started like thinking what would this sh- what would it be like if it was a tv show what would the episodes be called what would the ch- what chapters would be in each episode so just like kind of doing like, little things like that just to think um mm-hmm you know, to like motivate myself really helps. And so yeah, I do definitely think a lot about like television and movies. It's just a lot of fun. Okay. Okay. I want to, I want to go back to um, the publishing process. I understand you're self-publishing now. I've self-published and also done traditional. Do you like, in terms of self-publishing, do you like the control? Because I'm wondering, are you coming up with your titles? You've got some great covers. There's a lot there. It's a lot of work, but do you like that aspect of it? Yeah, I do really like being able to like take control of my own work. It's also, it's a really great learning experience, especially for yeah. um, someone like myself who's really young. I can learn a lot about the publishing world and about marketing and like keeping track of things and just a lot about business too. So it's like in some ways, you know, being able to do all of it myself really provides this wonderful learning experience. Sweet. Now you you say do all of this yourself, but I, I'm thinking your parents have got to be involved in some way how do they support you with this endeavor do they do a second are they your beta readers uh do they help you edit ideas or are you really just doing it all by yourself so my parents aren't allowed to read my books till they're published um ah, there's very okay. few people who are allowed to read them before they come out mm-hmm. um but I'd say it's like if I ever need – it's more just like kind of moral support um, with my uh, parents. But it's still – it matters. It matters a lot. And writing can be a very lonely uh, profession. You need yeah. moral support and you need encouragement sometimes whether they know what you're writing or not. Uh, just a loving, supportive environment leads to fueling that creative process. At least it, it does for me because when I'm not just sitting there you know, typing, I want to be – in, a, in an environment that feeds my spirit. So uh, I write better. Do you find that you write out of emotion sometimes or is it strictly mechanical? You mentioned that you social issues. So I assume that there are things that are, have touched you in some way. So does emotion play a big part in your writing? It definitely does. I think emotion and like personal experience experiences and really my feelings about a lot of different topics do really drive mm-hmm. my writing. Um, there are some books where it's like it's all fiction. I'm just kind of almost having to put myself into the head of the character in order to figure out like what they're thinking and how they're going to react to the situations. There are also some times in which I'm writing scenes that are like loosely inspired on true events. And then that I feel like it's more like for a bit like I'm the character, like the character's just me. Um, and that can be really good. Sometimes it's like, 
well, they might be out of character because that character might not be like me whatsoever. Um, mm-hmm. But I do think like those emotions really do play a large part in my work. I also like really love like sad, emotional, even like just very, you know, real stories that have mm-hmm. like all these, you know, relatable experiences. And so, yeah, like kind of can't write without emotion, I feel like. Uh, well, people do, but you can tell. I, I'd yeah. say you can't write well without emotion, without some heart, some spirit. Even if it's anger, you can't. To me, the best writing, you can always tell that they really, they felt it, that they felt and and they believed in what they were saying. What do, uh, are you in any writer's groups? No professional so, groups, online even? So, sort of. So I'm in my school's creative writing class, but also I run an online community for teen writers. It's on Discord, which can be kind of chaotic, mm-hmm. but it's it's a lot of fun. Um, Discord, like, we have about 900 members now, and it's really oh just my. this online chat room for um, teenagers who like to write. Um, doesn't matter what they write, if they like to write fan fiction or novels or short stories or just whatever. We have, like, everybody like, I don't know if there's a single genre that I haven't met someone who writes on that server. And it's got it's allowed me to meet so many new people and help out and at the same time even receive feedback. So I mm-hmm. guess, sort of. I love that. I love that. May I ask the name of the group so we can drop it in the show notes? Um, it's you called it's Writing Friends. I, I can Writing? definitely send a link. It's just called Great. Writing Friends. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because we, we try to... Anything that we mention, we try to uh, provide a link because there's always somebody listening. There'll be somebody listening to this because they're a teenage writer. So we want to make sure we can provide any resources to them that will be helpful. And I find that communities online or off can really, really be helpful and look at it, what things in a way you might not have or give you ideas, which is really what I love. So it uh, and it's a good way to make friends, too. So we've yeah. talked about publishing. We've talked about your writing process. Let's talk a little bit about the next step, which is marketing. I know you're very, very active on TikTok. Uh, you've got some really great reels on there. And I'd like to know more about how that started and why you chose TikTok over other platforms or are you on other platforms? So I'm on other platforms. Um all the main social media platforms I am on or I've been on at some points like I have an Instagram writing account I have a Twitter I had a YouTube channel but it wasn't writing related so I really tested out a variety of things and for a while my main platform was Instagram I was making these very pretty Instagram posts and I was really advertising and trying to build as big of a platform on there but it's also Instagram they're starting to get a lot better they have like reels now but you're also very limited or I was at that point like limited to just Mm -hmm. like a photo and it's like instagram's also been here for a really long time so it's like it's growing but it's not like new and exciting and it's not what is trending and i feel like for the last you know almost four years now tiktok has really been this like flagship platform especially with teenagers and i think it's very important because the majority of the people who have tiktok accounts are teenagers and instagram is more is like has a larger variety and that's really great. But for me, I feel like mm-hmm. my target audience, both in the advice I give, even though I think my advice can apply to adults, but with my like my story, the advice I give, my books, everything really appeals to people around my age, a little younger and a little older. So TikTok is like that perfect demographic. And mm-hmm. there's like some other writing accounts on TikTok. Really, it has, I feel like, a strong community of teenagers who write books and that's really, really cool. And it also means that I can kind of promote my, promote my books in that environment. So actually, though, kind of rewind for about a year, I was like against it because, you know, everyone was suggesting like, oh, Shanti, you need to make a TikTok account. And I was like, I have one, but I don't post about my books on there. And finally, in July or August, I believe, of 2021, I was like, I, I was just published my fifth book. You won't know her name. And I was like oh, I just have to do this. And um, I made a, I made a video and it just, it went viral. And each video, video I posted did like insanely well. And I was gaining new followers and new readers. I'd reached this whole new audience. And being able to really connect with these people and respond to their comments and just make these, also the videos are just so fun to make. That's, I think, really what got my career going. And I, I can see as I looked at, you know, looked at your reels, looked at uh, the comments and the the likes and it really is you have really tapped into something there do you when you're on there do you hashtag book talk I know that's a real common hashtag and 
how else do you differentiate or help people find you as far as discovery for someone else who's looking into using this for marketing? So first with hashtags, I used I do use like re- like applicable hashtags and the ones that are mm-hmm. trending, such as like hashtag book talk, hashtag reading, hashtag writing, hashtag writer talk, all of those. Um, mm-hmm. I have actually a list in my notes app that I keep, and occasionally I switch it. I also always do hashtag Shanti Hershenson. One because you know it gets more views when you look up my name, and right. two it's just it's kind of fun, and it also like tells people who I am, and maybe if they follow me, the vid- the, my, the video is more likely to get on their for you page. Um, I also keep track of what audios are trending because really it's all about like what works right now. And the TikTok algorithm algorithm changes a lot. So one day something might work, another one might not. So you really just have to keep track of everything. And when you have a video that performs well, try to figure out if you can what was what caused it to perform well. For me, mm-hmm. I realized my videos started performing better when I had the same like heading. It's like I'm 15 years old and I published this many books because mm-hmm. that instantly draws people in and they're intrigued. They're like, oh my gosh, how should you do that? Um, mm-hmm. And that also lets them like click on my profile and then try to find videos in which I actually talk about that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I guess with like what's trending also, like there are some trends that if you can turn into something related to your book or you as an author, it's really important. Um, because of course, if currently there's like some sort of type of video that's going around or like some sort of audio, just some or sort of TikTok trend, basically, whatever, right. yeah, like if it's working and you can actually change it to fit your book, it's going to obviously do a lot better because it's just what's going on right now. So just like stuff like that, I think is really what's helped, um, like, grow my account it's optimizing you're optimizing what you're doing and and, and you're yeah. making it just search engine friendly as well as building up more things so that when i google shanti hurgenson all of that comes up and that's that's the part a lot of people don't realize when they kind of stay away from social media is that i mean it's free it's global it's <laughs> there's so many ways and it and it's evergreen it's there for a long long time which may or may not be good depending on <laughs> what's going on with you but I love your formula and thank you for sharing the details because there are a lot of people who are just getting into writing or haven't been marketing and realize you know what I'm missing out so it's good for them to hear you have to test things everything doesn't work I think that's the big thing that people get frustrated about but you just keep testing and figuring out follow the data as they say yeah how do your I'm curious how do your friends react to having a, a a teenager who is you know so well known and multi published hyphen multi hyphenate as you say how do, how do, how did they react I think a lot of my friends are at first sometimes surprised it depends like sometimes they like know before we actually become friends other times it's like I'll just casually mention it and they'll be really surprised um Honestly, in some ways, I prefer that it's like they don't make too big a deal out of it. It's also so much fun where they're like, oh, yeah, this is our friend. She's a famous author. Um, <laughs> and at the same time, it's also like kind of fun to like be known as someone like independent from my achievements. Mm-hmm. So it's like kind of both ways. It just like depends on the situation. Um, but I think, yeah, for the most part, like everyone's like really proud and really um, just like accepting and really just like nice about it. Um, it's always fun when like random people at school are like reading my books and I'm like, oh, that's a nice book. Um, I hope you enjoy it. It's such an, it, it really is such an amazing thing. I'll never forget getting on an American Airlines flight one time and I'm just going down the out of my seat and someone was reading one of my books and I, I didn't say anything. I just had the biggest grin on my face. It was like, a dream come true to, to see that. And she was smiling and I kept trying to lean up to see if she looked like she was enjoying it. But it is. But the other thing, though, is in being an author, and I'm wondering if this happens to you, does everybody want to tell you about their book that they're writing? Do you get that a lot? I do. And for the most part, I try to, it's mainly online. I try to respond to like as many people mm-hmm. as possible. I do get sent a lot of people's work and I try to look at whatever I can. But sometimes, you know, it's like, I just have to be like, hey, I'm so sorry. Um, I am like super overwhelmed right now, but I'll try to get to this as soon as I can. Um, There's also, you know, I get asked a ton of questions on like Instagram and TikTok. I try to answer as many Mm -hmm. as possible. Um, But yeah, it can be challenging sometimes. And and, and it's natural for people to reach out. I reach out to people who have expertise in other areas, but I stopped with the 
looking at manuscripts unless they're asking me for a testimony or endorsement because there's some legal uh, issues there and some people have been sued because somebody sent them a book that they didn't even ask for. And then, you know, later they claim they stole their plot or whatever. So I had that happen to a couple of my friends and they had to go through a lot of legal complications. And I hate it because I like helping people, but I'm just like, I don't, I don't have time for this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I do not have time for that because they're really just a few stories out there anyway. It's, it's different characters, different names, but you know, there's man versus man, man versus himself, man versus nature. We're we're all telling the same three stories just in our unique style. So there are going to be similarities. Doesn't mean that I stole your work. Uh, yeah. So just from one, one writer to another, just, you know, if you want to just totally discontinue that, that, that is a legitimate reason because it can end up with legal stuff going on for you writers out there. So, and that's what I do a lot as well is attend. um, There are a couple of attorneys out there who specialize in literary law and podcast law. And there's so much that you just don't even think of because I'm not that type of person, but um, I'm just, I'm happy to hear that you've got a big heart, a giving heart, and you're trying to help as many people as you can, which leads me now to balance. You're a teenager. There's school. There's fun things to do. I think you like to skateboard and uh, do falconry and some other things. How in the world do you keep up this schedule? So really, one of the most important things to me is just having this sort of balance in my life. Like I need to do other things. Um, Mm -hmm. Typically, just the way I do this is I come up with a to-do list of everything I need to do, whether it's like homework or writing or some marketing or an interview. And, um, you know, of course, some of those you can't really like choose when you do them. Mm -hmm. Um, But for me, I try to get everything big out of the way first. Sometimes, actually, if I have a lot, I do actually the smaller things. Um, Basically, all the work things I do before I relax. um, And then, like, sometimes that means I have to get out of the house to write. And then when I get home, I watch a movie or I go for a walk. Um, Really, just whatever works. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of like I just have to choose, like, what I'm going to do. Sometimes there's, like, multiple, like, relaxing things I want to do and I can't do them. So I have to pick, like, which one I'm going to do today and which one I'm going to do tomorrow. Um, but really as long as I'm just efficiently getting, um, my to-do list done, I should be able to squeeze in some like other hobbies. Sweet. What? I think, uh, you mentioned Beyblading oh as well when we talked it, before, cause I thought it was something about Beyonce. <laughs> 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 I'm like Beyblading. I thought I knew everything about Bay and Jay-Z, but t- tell me about Beyblading. I haven't actually played in run a year now but um basically it's like a game of battling spinning tops it originated in japan i Mm -hmm. played that so much when i was a kid i would go to these um tournaments and Mm -hmm. like i would spend all of my i would make youtube videos it was really really fun um and that was a hobby that i kept until about like eighth grade maybe i'm a freshman Mm -hmm. in high school now so it's just it's fun it's it sounds interesting and and another way to just you know feed your creative process. I think all of those things that we do like that, where we're not having to put a lot of academic thought into it, really help us as far as balance and growth and create creativity. And you've got some fun things. I think you told me that you have siblings as well. Are your siblings writers? Um, I have a sister. She's not. She, I think she's a really good writer. She doesn't write um, very much, but she does really like to read. So, So is she one of your, when you do let your parents read? Does, does your sister read also? No, not usually. No, so you just get, do your parents give you pretty good feedback when they finally get to read? Um, Typically, it's like they read after th- it's published, so like anything that they have oh. feedback on like can't be fixed. Uh, but usually right. they don't. It's like they do have like some like sometimes like, oh, you know, it would have been cool if this would have happened. But for the most part, it's like they just tell me like they liked it. Liked it and good, good job. They've got to be very, very uh, proud of you and all your accomplishments. And you, you continue, you continue with your growth. Uh, I appreciate you sharing about how you balance things too and put important things first or things that are less challenging first. I guess it depends on what type of day you're having. Are you a, a list person or with juggling so many things? How do you stay on task? I have um, in my notes app, I make these like checklists and sometimes they're really long and I actually have to write down like how long I think the task is going to take me. Other times it's really like write a thousand words, do your interview, 
post a TikTok, do homework. And that's mm-hmm. like it. And it's really easy. Sometimes it's this really long um, kind of almost grueling list where I have to, you know, like organize them based on how easy a task is going to be and figure out like what I'm going to do. Right. That That is really, really important. And I think separating it, I do the same thing, categorizing it by easy. For me, I break up. Okay, I got to do this really hard, challenging, grueling thing. But these things are really simple, really easy. So I just try easy next to it, like an easy button. Like, okay, here's your break. Do something easy. Uh, rest your mind, rest your spirit, and just get it done. And I, I just love that you keep a, a notepad, keep a checklist. So many people don't write things down at all, but it just gets to the point you can't remember everything. Yeah. And something gets something gets dropped. So that's another pointer for you guys who are trying to figure out how to keep things balanced. Uh, it's not something we want to do, but making lists, it still works. It's old school, but it still, it still works. Let's switch gears here a little bit. Uh, you've got a really fascinating life. You've got all these great books. You've got a lot going on for yourself, but then you chose to start uh, speaking about bullying or anti-bullying, tell me a little bit more about what prompted that and how you how your activism looks. Yeah, so when I was in the sixth grade, um, I got bullied really, really badly. It mm-hmm. wasn't the first time I'd been bullied, but it was kind of like that breakthrough moment where I was like, oh my goodness, this is like, you know, a really, really serious problem. And what made me realize it was such a serious and kind of overlooked problem was when I went to my school administration. And I'm not going to like for like detail what happened to me because it's a lot of kind of mature um, stuff that I'm probably not going to I'm not going to say like on air, but a lot of really, really disturbing and horrifying things. And I went to them and I shared the I shared everything with them. I shared evidence with them. And the student got like sent to the office. I think they got like a one day in school, like punishment and Mm. they told me it's just middle school it happens all the time you know get used to it and I was like this is not just middle school this is a really serious thing why are we treating this like it's just going to happen to everyone and it did end up happening to a lot of other kids there were more than one there was you know over a dozen like victims of this person and a lot of them were told like the same thing like oh just middle school it happens all the time and I swear it really doesn't happen all the time and if it does it really shouldn't so my just kind of opinion on this whole topic is the way schools handle bullying is what allows the problem to get so bad because we treat Mm -hmm. it like it's just something it's like a part of growing up like oh kids are going to be mean things are going to happen you know and really that shouldn't be the case because we're not by being in like denial almost and being like oh it happens everywhere we're allowing things to get worse and we're allowing these bullies to just hurt other people and really that's what creates a really toxic and unsafe culture Agree. And it's almost kind of a gaslighting when someone's telling you this is happening, this is a bad experience. And then, you know, to have an adult come back and say, oh, it's really not that bad. You know, I walked uphill 40 miles to school in the snow. Your your life's fine. You're privileged or whatever they say. And yet we see suicide rates and substance abuse and so many things happening with our young people trying to cope with this online and offline bullying, at least with my generation, we could turn it off. I could go home, but this is, you know, it's everywhere all the time now. So I'm going to, I've got something I want to do for you right here for taking a stand and helping so many people. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. It is so easy to just you know, walk away or do what you have to do to get yourself in a better situation and not think about other people. So I I appreciate you taking the courage to do that. And have you written a book about any of your books about which one is that? So really, um, I think that's a big part of my activism is writing books. Um, The two books that I've written about it are You Won't Know Her Name and then it's companion poetry book, I Know Her Name. Arguably, you won't know her. Her name is still like my most popular book. It's the one that's like talked about the most. It's the one that's mm-hmm. really, essentially, done the best. Um, it's the novel told in poetry. Essentially, it details what happened to me and does in address how the school basically told me, like, oh, it's just middle school and how they let things continue ha- continue to happen. Um, honestly, that was a book I never like expected to do very well I just wrote it because I wanted to get the story off my chest and Mm -hmm. I ended up publishing it you know a few weeks after editing was done no pre-order campaign no real marketing just one Instagram post and it 
did end up kind of blowing up mainly because once it was out and like the first like good reviews came in i was like starting to feel a lot more confident and instantly people were like oh my gosh this is a really great book this is like helping me with deal with my own stuff so then i started to promote it more then i posted a tiktok and really that's just the book that's completely like made my career that is that is amazing and it, it- you hear that from so many creators, from so many artists, whether it was a song that they didn't even want to record or a book that they just really wrote for themselves or a song. But, you know, when we're talking about painful things that are meaningful uh, and how they impacted us, that can, there's so many people going through the same thing and, and great writers like you give them a voice. And that's what you've done. If, if you've been a voice for those who couldn't speak, who don't have your your you know engagement, outreach, your talent, um, I want to. I mentioned earlier that I was going to read an excerpt. If it's okay with you, I didn't. Yeah. You say I was going to do this in the beginning, but I need people to know because I know they're still wondering. Like a fifteen year old, could she be that good of a writer? Doctor Mo just carrying on because she's a guest on the show. But no, here's an excerpt from Biome. Lock that's got all kind of. Uh, it's, I'm reading uh, the excerpt from Amazon from the book. There is in Kindle edition and paperback. Biome Lock by Shanti Hershenson. Um, a spaceship has just landed on Earth, and a loud robotic robotic voice is coming from the spaceship. Greetings, Earthlings. You are now under the control of the of the Zorb forces. You are our prisoners. All of your belongings now belong to us, and in order to prevent any resistance, you will be split into 14 different areas. All young ones under the age of 13 years will be taken away and sent to a different area, but once they turn 13, they will be sent to live in one of the biomes we have developed. You can never leave the area, and any resistance will result in immediate disintegration. (laughs) Very few of you remain in the other places that you call countries, as many others have perished. And for your safety, you should abide by our rules. I mean, that <laughs> that just captivated me. That grabs the reader big time. You're like, wait, what? I started um, writing that book when I was 12. And- wow. Wow. And it's just going to keep getting better and better and better. But that... That is not the typical writing. I, I mean, I read a lot of writing. I ask to judge a lot of competitions, and I'm with a lot of writers group. That is not the typical writing of a 12 year old. That is extraordinary. What in, What Thank are your you. favorite subjects? I forgot to ask about school. You've got this great writing career. What What other subjects do you like besides English? I think <laughs> I was going to say, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Other than English, I mean. <laughs> Does creative That's writing okay. count? Get... <laughs> <laughs> creative writing journalism. Those are two of my classes this semester. Those mm-hmm. are, you know, humanities based subjects. Maybe history. Understood. Understood. So you mentioned college. What majors are you thinking about? That's that's gonna be here before you know it. Not English. Um, Not English. Okay. I think, I mean, so a lot of colleges don't actually offer creative writing as a major, but if I happen to end up at a college that does, and that's also probably gonna impact like my decisions. Um, I think being a creative writing major would be really cool. I also really like screenwriting. So I think that's another thing that I could get a degree in. Um, yeah. English is a possibility, but I also, I don't know. I'm not sure if I really want to like analyze a lot of really, really older books. Um, I prefer good. like books with like a newer outlook on life. And I feel like a lot of the books that are taught in schools and colleges are, were written a really, really long time ago and essentially only have, like, one perspective. Um, mm-hmm. They're, like, less diverse and, like, understandable. <laughs> that's, that's interesting that you say less diverse. I haven't gotten very far. This is your first book that I've read. But how do you incorporate diversity and inclusion in your books? Is the, And do you do it intentionally? I think it's really important that like every group feels represented when they read because so many people will read a ton of books and not like find themselves anymore. Mm -hmm. But I also am not a fan of like forcing diversity and Mm -hmm. like basically making it, you know, so like, you know, you really like keep track of like, it's like, you know, there's like some books, not many that I've read that it just like, they definitely were way too worried about diversity when they read it. And in turn, that can actually cause like a lot of stereotypes when they're like, Mm -hmm thinking too hard about it so almost like you know 
having characters that all like look differently or of different races, ethnicities, um, have different beliefs and are of like, you know, have different identities is really, really, really important. But it's like, you know, you have to kind of practice with it. It should come naturally and you should be focusing on the character and their heart instead of like focusing on how they're different from like all the other characters. Because if you're focusing too much on what makes them like diverse um, in the sense of like how they look, then that's not really helping with diversity. Instead, it's just like kind of forcing it. And it's also, you know, that's what causes it to become like stereotypical, I feel like. And there's so many ways to have diversity as well. We tend to think of it as a racial or ethnic thing, but uh, characters can have diversity in their age. You know, they Mm -hmm. can have um, diversity in their religious practices. They can, they're socioeconomic. There are a lot of different ways that we can show diversity and representation for different different groups. And we've got to think about that in in broader terms as well. And I'll give an example of something I don't like is when I'm watching a a buddy movie or, you know, a guy buddy movie or a military movie. And then there's just this random woman in there, you know, for this romantic liaison that makes no sense. There's no reason for her to be there. It adds nothing to the movie. That is totally the wrong type of diversity. (laughs) For, for you know, and it, it, it really just disturbs me as as a writer. I'm like, why is she there? What is this, what is going on? So, I love that you are aware of that and that you are consciously, especially as a female writer. I think it's something important as well that we really focus on and promote. So, before we go, do you have any advice for? writers out there of any age, there's so many people who want to write or they've written something. They don't want to let anybody read it. They don't want to take it to the next step. Can you give them some words of wisdom and some courage for moving forward? So first off, and I know this sounds kind of silly, don't be afraid. I think the reason a lot of young writers end up not publishing their work, even if they've done rounds and rounds of editing, is they're scared. You know, it's feedback and reviews and just the thought of other people reading and judging right. your writing is terrifying. Believe me, I understand. But it's also, it's so rewarding to get those reviews and ha- touch other people with your writing and really just, just be able to share like everything. So take the leap, go for it. You know, maybe have other people read your books just like beforehand if you want but really it just you have to take that jump um my other thing and this is super huge for anyone who's any age really and who is like planning on publishing like their book Mm -hmm. start marketing early start posting on social media building a platform and making the appropriate and necessary connections because the more people you know the easier it's going to be to sell your books you know you might be able to get advice and also just being able to meet more people is really what can drive more book sales And um, finally, another, like, you've written a book. Please don't. I have, like, you know, I post a lot of publishing tutorials on TikTok. And when Mm -hmm. I say, oh, yeah, go publish your book, that doesn't mean write a first draft and go publish it. Please just. Hello. You want to make sure that you are going through and editing your book and having someone else, more than one person, maybe, depending on how you work, look at it and give you feedback and help you with like grammatical errors and everything, especially, you know, editors. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is, if you write one draft, first off, there's stuff that might not even make sense to you in there. You should be reading it over first, regardless, and really making those changes. Um, It sounds silly, but it does happen a lot where, you know, people, especially with like, I think there are a lot of people that, you know, even see like my tutorials and then think, oh, I just finished my first draft. Let's go publish. But right. you're missing like a crucial step. And I know like editing may seem very, very difficult. It's also can be a very fun part of the process to be able to read your book like a reader. Um, you may get tired of your book. You may just want to stop editing. But it's also such an important part of the process that it's like, you know, it's an experience that like every author has to go through. And it's mm-hmm. kind of like a rite of passage. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Very sage advice from an extraordinary young lady, Shanti. Tell everyone how to find you online, how to connect with you in the future. Um, so yeah, first you can reach me on my website, which is shantihershenson.com. That's S-H-A-N-T-I-H-E-R-S-H-E-N-S-O-N.com. Um, for the most part, I have links to my books on there. Occasionally, I do blog posts, but not very often. I try to keep up to date with the links and stuff. However, that press page, it's been like that for a few months. It's a little mm-hmm. um, messy right now, so it's going to uh, undergo like 
a remodel soon. But just really, if you look up my name, you should be able to find all of my interviews and everything on wherever you like to listen to like podcasts or watch YouTube videos or read articles. Um, otherwise, you can find me on TikTok, which is at Shanti Who Writes. I post a variety of tips on there as well as videos about my books and my story and just really like whatever writing related thing I feel like posting. My Instagram, I don't post on there as much, but I'm very active. I check every single day is at Shanti Hershenson. And really it's like more book announcements. Um, I have a lot of Instagram stories and cat photos. So definitely check that cat out. I also photos. have Twitter, but <laughs> on Twitter, I don't really, I just repost things people say about me. So Understood. Nothing wrong with that and nothing wrong at all with this amazing start to what is surely going to be a long and uh, wonderful career. I wish you many, many more years of happy writing and thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. And wasn't that a great program? Oh, love that episode. I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Learn more about me on my website, drmoanderson.com. That's M-O-E. You can read book excerpts, watch videos, learn about my services that I offer, and book me for a speaking engagement. I'd love to talk with your group, and I'd love to work with you. So until the next time, review, renew, and re-you. Thank you.